Today we are doing some uh, field tests of the swimming abilities of Asian carp. And behind me right now we have silver carp, which are one of the two species of Asian carp in which we're most interested. Uh, the, the Corps of Engineers is concerned, of course, because these animals are dispersing throughout the Mississippi River. They are getting close to the Great Lakes, and they are capable of moving through locks and dams and other riverine structures. Uh, their swimming abilities are not known. And uh, some people have suggested that they're quite powerful swimmers, like salmon. Uh, but our own observations are is that they are relatively weak swimmers. And this is a good thing, because it means that we can contain, uh, flush, and possibly manage these, these uh, animals by generating flows that are in excess of their swimming abilities. We take the fish from the river here. We are, we are working on an offshoot of the, um, of the Mississippi River. We put them in this mobile swim tunnel with local water. We crank the speed up in the tunnel and observe uh, how long they're able to swim at a particular speed. And we develop swimming endurance models for the fish. This approach of using a mobile swim tunnel is very unusual. And uh, based on the information I've seen, it's only been attempted in four or five studies during the past 40 years. And it, it, it makes a heck of a lot of sense because you, you don't subject the fish to the stress of being moved around or transported in small containers of water. You take them out of the river, you put them in the tank, and you test them when they're, they're fresh and, and really uh, unstressed from, from being moved around. I'm here working with the Army Corps of Engineers to study um, the swimming performance of Asian carp and that's of a real sincere interest to us up at the north end of the river because uh, the carps have not invaded that piece of the river yet and it's pretty clear to us that the water flows through the locks and dams is holding them back. It's extremely important for everybody to do whatever they can to prevent these destructive fish from getting into ecosystems. Uh, they're voracious, they impact the very base of the food chain, and uh, they jump, which is not good either. Nothing good about them. Asian carp were brought here in the 1970s, and they are believed to have escaped sometime during the 1980s. We began to see them in the lower Mississippi River in the early 1990s, uh, in fact, 1991 to be specific. Uh, they are spreading into almost every contiguous habitat uh, of the Mississippi River. Although they can only spawn in flowing water of the main channel, they, they can survive almost anywhere. And in fact, they grow very rapidly in places uh, native fish can't grow, like uh, small, shallow floodplain pools, habitats that are so small and so warm that they would, they would kill uh, a native fish. Uh, they, they eat plankton at an extreme extraordinary rate, uh, they are actually able to deplete zooplankton. The, the water body that we're on today, Forest Home Chute, has relatively low concentrations of zooplankton, which is the animal component of uh, plankton, because of the, the plankton eating abilities of these fish. They are believed to compete very uh, strongly with, uh, with our native fishes, particularly planktivorous fish like our own North American paddlefish. Just a little bit about the impact of Asian carp on commercial fishing. I've been fishing for probably 40 or more years, and the Asian carp have made a devastating impact on commercial fishing as far as some of our species. Uh, they directly compete with buffalo, paddlefish, and uh, some of the common carp. And uh, our, our catch of uh, some of these species has been dramatically reduced because of Asian carp, especially the silver carp. Big heads are a problem, but the silver, I think, is more of a problem. We got, you know, they're in, infested in every body of water, I think, we have that's connected to the Mississippi River on the lower end. And, uh, you know, they, I don't foresee any way of ever, you know, reducing the numbers enough to, uh, to make any difference, really, here. Well, I, I think the, uh, the people on the Upper Miss need to really pay close attention to what's happened down here in the South. Uh, you know, it's not, uh, it's not something to be taken lightly, especially if you fish for a living.